Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna pimp your skimmer. All right, so a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned that I did a little DIY trick to uh, build in a uh, automatic uh, float in my skimmer cup so that when the cup got full, it turned the skimmer off. And um, I did allude to the fact that it's a pretty simple electronic task um, and you can do it particularly if you have a DC powered skimmer without uh, any electrical um, qualifications or, or uh, requirements like that. DC skimmer is no problem at all. If you've got an AC powered skimmer, you're gonna need, you can still do this, but you're gonna need an electrician to um, make it work properly and safely for you but assuming you have a DC skimmer let's uh, run through um, well first of all what it is how it works and I'll show you the parts and we'll quickly make one here so um, what is a, uh, a skimmer shut off um, basically you've got a skimmer cup in your uh, tank and uh, it bubbles over and uh, collects all the waste in here and what ends up happening is either um, you forget about it and it slowly builds up or something goes wrong with your skimmer or tank and it overflows really quickly, bubbles right up and ends up then bubbling over back into your sump and creating this horrible mess or if you're even more unlucky, it won't overflow into your sump. It'll overflow into your cabinet and floor and um, cause you all sorts of trouble uh, with your uh, significant other. So effectively what we want is a little uh, float switch that sits in here that as soon as that level gets up near the top of this cup, it's gonna turn it off. Now, um, it seems relatively simple and I'll, I'll get the first part or the first component uh, to the, to the uh, solution and that's a uh, float switch. Simple as this, goes up, on, off, on off. Now, the question is how do we get this float switch into this cup so that it turns the power off to the skimmer? Now obviously you're going to need to do a little, uh, depending on your skimmer, some of them already have nice little uh, breather holes that perfectly fit the, um, the thread of this uh, float switch. This one does not, so we'd have to drill it, but uh, this is just here for mock-up purposes. We'll sit him aside. We want this, this float switch to sit inside that skimmer cup and we want it so when the float's down, the skimmer is on and when the float's up, the skimmer is off. So obviously the first component we need is a float switch. The next component we need is one of these handy little solid state relays. Now, you do not have to use a solid state relay. I've just used these in a bunch of projects and um, I find them very simple. The little uh, status light's great. Um, they're significantly bigger <laughs> than required and uh, they're probably a bit more expensive than required. I'll pop all the links to um, eBay purchases and things um, down below. But uh, these are the ones I use, they work well. This one's actually a DA. I normally recommend the DDs because they uh, take a DC input and have a DC output, but uh, this one will work just as well. Um, so yeah, we need a relay. And then I highly recommend, just to make things easy, a bunch of uh, little connectors like these, ideally ones that are gonna fit the, uh, the connector on your skimmer. So your, uh, normally you'll have your power pack that'll then have a little plug that goes up to the controller for your DC powered skimmer. And I normally have like a plug like that, um, which goes into your skimmer. I think they're normally, I don't know, 2.1 centimeters or so, uh, 2.1 millimeter inlets, something like that. Again, I'll put some links to the connectors. You want the males and the females. You're gonna need a set of each, maybe three sets. Um, just to make sure you got enough bits and pieces. So it's one more component you're gonna need. Um, and this is the part that most people get caught out on. You are going to need a small DC power supply. This one's a uh, Netgear, it's an AC to DC, 12 volt, one amp output supply. The reason why we want this is this is what's going to actually put the power through our float switch and back down to the controller. It's gonna tell the, this relay when to supply the power to the uh, skimmer and when not to. We don't wanna switch the power itself from the, from the skimmer itself through this little float switch. These little float switches, they just cannot handle that kind of current. You can try it and you'll find you'll burn it out quick smart. It doesn't work. You have to have a separate power supply. Now, most people I know have got one of these laying around. Um, just make sure it's a DC output. It needs to be probably more than three volts DC, less than 24 volts DC. The smaller, the better. You're not wanting to run a lot of uh, current through this switch. I've just got this little one here from an old uh, modem. That's gonna work a treat. All right, so now you know what the skimmer overflow switch is. You know what components we need. Now you need to know how to build it and how it works. So 
We're going to start off with uh, the power supply. So this is going to just plug into your uh, mains outlet and it's going to give you a small DC voltage out here. Now, we want that to the power to go through this float switch and you'll see we've got a uh, same size connector coming out of the power supply, same size connector from the uh, float switch. We're going to need to do something there. So in the middle of all that is our uh, relay. Now the relay has uh, the input on the bottom, which is around your way is the bottom there, has the output up the top. When this sees a voltage applied to it, it's going to join these two together. So effectively, we put a small circuit through here. As soon as we see power here, it's going to connect these. So we have our skimmer power coming in here and then coming back out or other way around, doesn't really matter, to go through there when it sees the small power supply. So we need the DC to come in and put power in here when the float switch is down. So to do that, I generally recommend something like this. All right, so let's have a look. We've got power coming from the wall into this plug here. The, D, the negative side is gonna go, and we'll do it the other way. So our power is gonna come in, notice I don't have it connected right now. Our power is gonna come in via this connector, plug into here. The positive side is gonna go straight into the, into the uh, positive side is gonna go straight into the relay. And it's gonna screw that in. The negative side is gonna come out and go through this connector here, which is then gonna plug into our float switch. So the negative is, positive is gonna go into the controller. Negative is gonna go through here, through to our float switch. When the float switch sees action, it's gonna come back and then come into our controller over here. Okay, now. Obviously we would uh, heat shrink solder and heat shrink that uh, connection there, but for the moment we can actually test this. So what I'm gonna do is plug in the power here. And you'll see the advantage with these relays is it has a little status light that tells you when it is functional. So at the moment it's not and our float switch is down, but I bet when I lift our float switch up, you see the light, that now means that there's power going through it or well, these two contacts are joined. As you may notice, this is actually backwards. It's not gonna work for us. So when the float switch is down, i.e. the cup is empty, power's off. When the float switch is up, power's on. So when it's overflowing, it's gonna turn the skimmer on, not gonna work. Now you may think we've stuffed something up here. We haven't, it's super simple. These little float switches just work on a little reed switch, a little magnet. All you do is you pop off the end of that, take the magnet off, turn it around, pop it back on, and you'll now be surprised to see when the float switch is down, power's on. When the float switch is up, power's off. Easy as that. So the concept of our relay now works. All we have to do is run the power for the skimmer through these top two contacts. I'm just going to disconnect the power for a second. And to do that, we use another couple of these uh, inlets and outlets. Basically that will plug into the wall, go to the skimmer cup. The power for our skimmer is going to come into here. It's going to plug into that one. And then this will then plug into the controller. This is basically going to intercept that power. And much like we did down here, the positive is going to go straight through from one connector to the other, and the negative is going to switch through here. All right, we're all connected up. I'm going to plug the power back in. And now we've got full function from our float switch. So power comes in from our control uh, to our controller here plugs into our controller through here. When the float switch is down, power is on. Float switch is up, power is off. Simple as that. All you really need to do now is realistically, you should solder these connectors and then either put some heat shrink or some tape over them. And if you wanted to make it really neat, I'd put this all in a nice little box just so it's not gonna get exposed to the elements. Then you're right to plug it in and uh, let your skimmer run until it's full and it'll turn itself off. I'll show you mine in action now. All right, so we're in my uh, cabinet, hence the uh, echoey sound. And um, you can see I've got my relay here. I have not mounted it in a box just yet, but uh, the uh, outlet comes uh, down this way here and plugs into my skimmer controller. The power that was going to my uh, skimmer controller plugs in here. And then uh, this power comes off through this little connector here, comes from my little 12 volt power supply and goes off into my uh, skimmer cup. Now that all seems overly complicated and messy and for the moment it is a touch uh, messy, but uh, the only thing you really need to be interested or concerned with is, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see there, I'll bring it down so you can. We've got the uh, float here for my cup. 
lift that up, skimmer goes off. Let that come back down again, skimmer comes back on. All that without cutting a single wire to the uh, original skimmer or a power supply, all completely removable and changeable to the next skimmer. Obviously, like I said, I'd recommend you to uh, tidy this up a little bit because uh, this has just been popped together in a, a little bit of a hurry, but uh, I wanted to share the uh, project with you guys because um, I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's a sort of little feature that everyone should have. All right, so here's a little bit of a close-up of, uh, of the system. And as I pointed out at the bottom here, you've got the input. So as soon as we see between three and 32 volts DC applied negative there and positive there, it turns our circuit on, which basically means it connects that one and that one together. So we have our power line in from the wall. So we connect over to the wall, don't mind the thermomix. That converts it to a nice 12 volt DC that comes in here. Our power then comes over here. The positive line goes straight to that input there. The negative line connects off and goes into our float switch. When the float switch completes the circuit, the negative line comes back, connects into here. So we'd now have negative and positive there from our little 12 volt power supply, which joins these two contacts together. Now, likewise, we have our um, power pack from our skimmer plug in here. The positive goes straight across to the uh, output here. The negative comes in and waits till then these two contacts are joined, which you can tell by the light at the moment, it is because our float switch is down. Float switch up, light goes off, they are not joined now, so the negative is not getting through. When this plugs into your skimmer controller, it won't see power and it will switch things off. And again, put it down, light comes back on, skimmer turns back on. All right guys, there you have it. That's the little skimmer controller. Float up, power off, float down, power on. I hope that's of use to you guys out there. Like I said, super simple project. I'll put um, a full listing of all the uh, components you need to make this yourself. And I'll also um, include throughout this video, a few of the electrical schematics of how to make it work, just so you can pause it on there um, and run through the project yourself. If you have any questions, any feedback, I'm not an electrician. <laughs> uh, I don't take any responsibility if you uh, go about this the wrong way, but please only do this if you have a DC skimmer and that you have a little bit of comfortableness and a little bit of familiarity with uh, electronics and electronic safety. Even DC can be dangerous, so guys, please be careful. But if it's AC, just don't touch it, right? It's a completely different concept. Um, it's, not, it's not a little bit of power going through there. It can be quite deadly. So if you're lucky enough to have a DC skimmer and um, you wanna put an automatic shut off on it, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and found it useful. Again, any questions, comments, feedback, pop it in the section down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with any of your mates who uh, have been caught out uh, with their skimmer cup overflowing. And until um, next time, guys, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.